In this video, we're going to talk about another thread synchronization technique, which is monitor. First of all, why do we call it monitor? You can consider it as an action toward critical section. So previously, we we're using a lock to protect the critical section. So when we encounter a critical section, so let's, for example, use this block to represent a critical section, and uh, the monitor represents the action that it monitors the critical section. Why it needs to monitor the critical section? Well, because it's critical. And why it's critical? Because the critical section includes the resources that can be shared within different threads, and because different threads can run in parallel, so they could potentially run into conflicts. That's why we call it critical section. And having a monitor to monitor the critical section so that if one thread already entered into the critical section, other threads have to be blocked, have to wait. So that's why we call it monitor. Knowing this concept will help us to understand the syntax and make sense out of it. Otherwise, we'll just have to remember the syntax, although remembering syntax is not difficult. OK, let's continue with the, the syntax. But first of all, monitor is actually going to generate an exclusive lock which is this exclusive lock that we have talked about. In fact, the lock is based on monitor. Okay, so it's basically a simple form of monitor. However, using monitor gives you more granular control than the lock. So this is the basic syntax here. You can see we have a monitor.enter, we have monitor.exit. And in between of these two lines is our critical section here. So basically here, monitor.enter, is trying to enter into the critical section. And here is trying to exit critical section. Now, once we're able to enter into the critical section, we actually generate a exclusive lock. So monitor.enter actually generate a exclusive lock if it successfully enter the critical section over here. So then no other threads will be able to enter the critical section. And then monitor.exit is always called at the end of the critical section in order to release that lock. However, if there is another thread that is already called the monitor.enter and in turn generated the lock, then this monitor.enter will be will be blocking. So here this is blocking, right? Or until the lock is released by the other thread, then it will enter into the critical section over here. And we use the try and finally mechanism so that we are always calling the monitor.exit in order to make sure that we always release the lock that is generated from here. So this is the basic syntax of using monitoring. You can see that this sort of uh, makes sense that we are using this word monitor to monitor the critical section. And then we enter into the critical section and then we exit out of the critical section. And in between of that is our critical section. So this makes a lot of sense. Although I personally still prefer the lock, exclusive lock syntax over here because it's very, very simple. However, when you use the lock, the compiler actually compiles this code into this. So exactly like this. That's why when I talk about the exclusive lock, I was saying that there is a try and finally mechanism that's referring to this particular code. So this is the basic syntax of using monitor. If we jump into this particular example that we used before to increment counter, and because the counter itself is incremented by different threads, therefore this becomes a critical section. Especially this is not a atomic operation, and right? that's why it's a uh, critical section here. And previously we were using a exclusive lock to protect the critical section. Now, if we were to change this to use the basic syntax of monitor, uh, then it's still quite simple. Uh, we're going to say monitor.enter. We're trying to enter into the critical section by monitoring the, the lock. You can say monitor the section. You can also say monitor the lock over the section. Right? So both will help you to understand why we call it monitor. Now I'm going to change to a different way. I'm going to say we're trying to monitor the lock over this section. And if there's no lock, then we're going to generate the lock, right? So monitor to enter is monitoring this counter lock. 
And if, if we are successful, then we generate a lock over this critical section. Now we're going to use try and finally to make sure that at the end of the section, we always able to exit the critical section. And therefore, we're releasing the lock. So if we were to do it this way, this is exactly the same as lock using the exclusive lock. Okay, so if we were to run it, we're going to see that the result is 200,000. It shouldn't be less than 200,000. You can see that the final counter value is 200,000. No matter how many times you run it, it's going to be 200,000 because we're using monitor as a thread synchronization technique. Okay, this is the basic syntax. Now let's revert this back to using lock. So using lock in this particular example makes sense. However, if we let me close this solution and bring up the ticket booking system or the seats booking system for, for airline company that we did in the assignment number two. So if we look at the example over here, go to program.cs, we are surrounding the critical section over here with the lock so that only one thread can access the critical section at a time. That is what we did and it has been working. However, there is a problem. Imagine that this is a real world application. It is actually a web server and people are accessing this server through browsers. If for some reason it's, it's quite busy, there doesn't have to be too many users to cause the problem. Let's say there are 20 users are booking at the same time, then everybody's in queue and waiting, right? So the chances for this to be released for the locks to be released within five or 10 seconds could be quite low, could be quite low. And usually for a airline tickets booking system, waiting for five seconds or 10 seconds without being notified of what is going on is quite user unfriendly, right? not friendly. So sometimes we want to provide a message in between to let user know that the system is busy and try again later. There's different mechanism you can apply to it, but usually it involves a notification and that notification can only be applied if the thread is not blocked, right? <laughs> if you're still blocked, how can you display a message to the user? That's why the monitor has another feature which is a waiting timeout time. So instead of using the lock, we can try to use monitor. So here we can see monitor dot, there is another method, it's called try enter. And this one takes different signatures. So there is one, you can see that there is a milliseconds timeout. Let's say that in order to simulate it, we increase this to uh, 10 seconds processing time. And then this one would be two seconds wait time. This is not realistic, but in order to trigger the scenario, I'm going to do it this way. Basically, we're, we're trying to acquire a exclusive lock, but we're only going to wait for two seconds. If there is a lock that is already required by some other threat, then I'm going to wait for two seconds. And then this is going to return us false. See this return value says true if the current threat acquires a lock, otherwise false. So when this returns false, that means we didn't succeed in getting a lock. So therefore we cannot enter the critical section. So we're going to use a if statement. And of course, if we successfully acquired the lock, then we enter into this critical section and else here, we're going to console and write line. We're going to say the system is busy system is busy. Why we say this is because we didn't get the lock, right? Someone else is still executing the critical section. Therefore, we cannot enter into the critical section and we time out. So we can say the system is busy, please wait, something like that. This is not very user friendly. A better way to actually do this is to have a loop. Okay, so if this fails, it's going to try again. But at least when we use try enter, we have a timeout, we can use the timeout to output a message, make it more user friendly so that the user is notified that we're still trying. But in the meantime, uh, our system wants to let you know what is happening, right? Instead of making the user waiting the whole time without any message by using the try enter, 
and providing a timeout, we are able to notify the user about what is happening. So that's the good thing about using monitor as opposed to exclusive lock. Both create exclusive lock and hold on to the exclusive lock. Don't forget here that we need to release the lock. And where is that? That's in the critical section over here. We're going to do a try and catch. Uh, try and finally, we're going to move this or actually move this curly brace down over here. And then we're going to say, finally, we are going to release the lock by saying monitor.exit tickets lock. Okay. Now that we have increased this to 10 seconds and wait time to two seconds, I think we're gonna still not able to output this notification. It's because the processing starts at the very beginning and the wait is over here. Right? So we have to move this line down. So the processing is usually within the critical section. So that is part of the critical section. This time we should be able to see the system is busy. Please wait and let's run the application and see what is going to happen. All right, let's increase the font a little bit and I'm going to keep enter letter B to generate a lot of booking in the queue to simulate the situation. So I'm going to generate a lot of B like this and you can see this is the system is busy. <laughs> Please wait. So we need to wait for 10 seconds. And finally, there is one that completed the booking. So maybe our wait time is uh, processing time is too long. Maybe change this to three seconds processing time and let's try again. So lots of B's and now you can see that we have multiple, uh, at least two bookings are successful. Other ones are being blocked out. Right? That's why I was saying this is still not user friendly. Better way to do it is to have a loop, right? loop around the critical section so that uh, it's going to repeatedly try to enter the section, but at least it gives us a opportunity to output. Okay, that's everything I wanna cover about using monitor for thread synchronization. If any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.